Hey everybody, welcome back to Journey to VR. So this week, I'm gonna be showing you how we can generate a low polygon model from a high polygon asset. To do this, we're gonna be using Maya's modeling toolkit. Now the modeling toolkit's been a multi-release effort. This week I'm working in Maya 2018 and it's had some great enhancements made to the modeling workflow as well as the UV editing workflow and I'll share a few of those with you along the way as we generate a low polygon mesh from this very high polygon object. So if we look at the topology of this object, it's a mess, right? Like this is like a polygon soup. And the reason it looks like this is because this TurboSquid model was originally generated using scanned in data. So this isn't gonna work well for my AR or mixed reality experience. I really need low polygon assets that are gonna work well on a mobile device. And I also wanna make sure that the flow of that geometry is logical because I'm gonna have these little construction workers in there trying to rip the shoe apart and do things with it. So we wanna make sure that anywhere there's changes where like maybe the rubber meets the leather, you know, there's really nice contouring flowing lines. So that's why we wanna rebuild this, this asset. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using a pretty standard workflow where we take a very low res piece of geometry and just keep refining it, refining it, refining it until it looks like this high res piece of geometry. So we'll start off with the polygon cube and we'll use some basic transformations on this polygon cube to start blocking out the basic shape of this shoe. So this is gonna be very rough work that we start with, but as I said, it will continue to get more and more refined as we work through the process. So what we wanna do is we wanna get our basic shape started here. So now that I've got my polygon cube sort of started, what we're gonna do is jump over to the multi-component mode, and I'm gonna jump into my transform tool, and I'm gonna be using the middle mouse button to start to directly modify or tweak these components. So this is newly added in 2018, the ability to just use that middle mouse button and directly modify or manipulate um, components. It works with any of the transformation tools, so move, scale, or rotate. And the idea behind this, again, is just, just speed when you're doing this sort of blocking work. Another thing that we've added is the ability to do extrusions very quickly. So if I go and hold on the shift key and grab one of those transformation handles, you can see I was very uh, able to very fastly just extrude that guy back out. Again, hold down that shift key and drag on one of those transformation handles and you can do that extrusion. And then just jump back in here and start you know, further refining either edges, vertices, or faces using that multi-component to sort of block out this, this sort of basic shape. And then obviously if I wanted to, I could come back here and you know, start to extrude that guy out you know, again and again and again. And, and that's basically what I did to get to, um, you know, to, get to a, a low res shape that sort of wraps around the shoe. Now I've got one that's a little bit more refined. We'll just kind of display that guy up and we'll jump into the modeling toolkit and we'll start to further refine this guy. So with the modeling toolkit, we're gonna to be using the multi-cut tool and the quad draw tool. These are really the workhorses of the modeling toolkit. So the first thing we wanna do is start to add in some more divisions using that multi-cut tool. So we'll jump over to our top view with that piece of geometry selected, we'll jump into the multi-cut tool and I'm just gonna basically swipe across the center line of that shoe holding down my shift key and you can see that I just inserted all of those edges down that shoe. So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we can insert some edges sort of across this region. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back into the object mode and when I do this operation, I actually wanna use that high-res piece of geometry as a guide, a live surface. I want any of the work that I'm doing to actually snap to that piece of geometry. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that mesh recap and we're going to make it into a live surface. So with that done, we'll go and we'll jump back into our multi-cut tool. Let's just grab this guy and with the multi-cut tool re-enabled, you can see that we now have a new display and this is new in 2018. We now have live constraint options for the display. So we can adjust, you know, sort of the opacity of that object as well as whether or not it's gonna to snap to the background, uh, back faces. The surface offset allows you to say if we are snapping to that to give it a little bit of offset off that surface. That was actually added in update three. So what we wanna do is we wanna basically draw a snap that goes across this grid line. So if I hold down my X key, you can see that the, the multi-cut tool now works with uh, grid snapping as well as vertex snapping. So if you hold the X key, you get grid snapping. The VT, V key, you'd get vertex snapping. And you can see that when it inserted those edges, those verts did go ahead and snap onto that actual piece of geometry, which is exactly what we wanted to have happen. So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna go through and have all these other vertices that are sort of floating around the outside of the shoe snap onto the shoe. So there's a couple ways of doing that. I could just go into my move tool and um, use that that kind of, you know, that, that middle mouse button tweak to go through and touch each one of those vertices and, you know, sort of, you know, snap them on, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of work your way around the shoe and snap them to the various parts of the shoe, sort of like this, you know, maybe I come over here and 
snap this guy down because it needs to come down here. And you know, you could do something like that. that. That works pretty well. Another way that I like to do this, though, that I think is actually a little bit faster is to jump into the quad draw tool. And with the quad draw tool, there's this really nice relax function. So if you hold the shift key down, you know, it, it lets you relax. And the relaxing operation basically introduces a transform onto those, onto those verts, right? So as soon as they start to move because that snapping of that live surface is turned on, they're gonna basically kind of zap themselves right onto that live surface. So you can see how quickly just using that shift key, I can kind of I can kind of roll through here and sort of snap those guys down and relax those guys down. Now a few of them kind of pulled a little bit too far. And this is one of the things that's really nice about the quad draw tool is you can also just go in here and just start directly grabbing the objects and, and moving them. You know, you can grab these verts directly and and sort of start moving those guys around to, to kind of reposition where they are. So I want them to kind of come down here to the bottom of that sole, you know, pretty straightforward stuff there. So just kind of work my way through this and this is really what it's all about is you kind of go in here and you start to further refine these guys um, by adding in more and more detail where you want it so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use let's just kind of pull this guy down here we're going to use the um we're going to use a quad draw tool to or i'm sorry we're going to use the multi-cut tool to start to add in where that sole happens so i'm going to basically just trace around where i want my hero geometry sort of my main flow lines and Obviously, where that sole meets the upper part of the shoe is a perfect area to kind of define one of these, you know, the, the hero topology of my shoe. I would, I would call this the hero topology. I guess it seems to make pretty good sense. So we'll just kind of click around this guy really, really fast and add in that, that detail there, you know, pretty straightforward. So that looks good. I like that, you know, and I can go in here and, you know, add in some more detail. Maybe, um, maybe we jump into the quad draw tool and with the quad draw tool added, we can go in here and add in a, a, a loop on that guy that sort of ties where those shoelaces would be. And then you can go in here and obviously start to further refine this guy. And the idea is you're gonna, you know, you're gonna add in detail where you think you need it. So you're just holding down that control key, I can just sort of start snapping in some detail where I think I might need it. Another thing that you could do that's kind of cool is use the multi-cut tool to go in here and you know, like, you know, maybe you add in some detail, you know, sort of around here like this, and then you know, kind of kind of edge edge this guy across. Oops, let's complete that guy and, you know, kind of come in here and, and do something like, like that and then join this guy. So the idea is, you know, you just basically go in here and you start drawing on this and adding in the detail where it's going to make sense. Trying, trying to keep quads everywhere you can. Um, it's not that important to keep quads everywhere because I'm going to actually do a further refining of this guy where the quads are going to get generated anyway. So basically, um, that's my workflow. I kind of trace the... Um, the hero lines of the shoe and add in the detail where I want it or where I think it needs it. And I ultimately end up getting to, um, I ultimately end up getting to something that looks like this. So um, if we just hide this guy, you can see that is what I ended up getting to. And again, it's just kind of following those contour lines, trying to keep quads everywhere I can. So once I've got something like that, what I do is I go through and I do a smooth. So as soon as I do that smooth, these all become quads. And that looks pretty cool. Obviously, it's still got the overall shape of that shoe, but it's not really totally matched to it anymore. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically do a shrink wrap. So we'll grab that low res piece of geometry, we'll grab that high res piece of geometry, we'll go up to deform, and we'll run a shrink wrap on that guy with the projections at the closest. So as soon as I do that, you can now see that if we hide this guy, that high res piece of geometry, you know, that, that, that object obviously now matches that shoe really pretty good. So we'll just do a delete all by type history on that guy. And the next thing that we wanna do now is add in some UV. So if we look at our UV window, you'll see that um, the UVs that are on here are obviously just a cube, right? So it's like the, the, the unwrapped cube with all those inserted edges. And that's not really what we wanna have happen. We wanna have um, topology or UVs that, that make a little bit more sense than that. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the create UV section in the UV toolkit. So very similar to the modeling toolkit, the UV toolkit has all the tools right here on this right-hand panel, super fast to work with. And there's a ton of new tools, a ton of new functionality in the UV editing workflow in 2018. And what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new planar projection on this shoe. And this is kind of cool. If you use your left, middle, or right mouse button, it's gonna project on the X, Y, or Z axis. So I wanna just click on my right mouse button to project down the Z axis. Pretty straightforward. So now what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and we wanna start to cut this up a little bit so that we can unwrap this or unfold this. So we'll grab where our sole would be. We'll get out of the create mode and we'll go to the, um, the cut sew menu and we'll just say cut. So we'll just kind of cut an edge there and then we're just gonna grab um, an edge here and shift double click to, oops, it looks like I grabbed the wrong one. So we'll grab that guy 
and that guy, and we'll cut that. And then we'll do another cut across the back of the shoe. So we'll grab this dude here and that dude there, double click on it and then do a cut. So now what we've got is if we look at our shells here, we've got all of our shells, right? So what we wanna do is we want to, we wanna lay these guys out, we wanna unfold them. So if I grabbed all of these guys and we go out of the cut so and go into the unfold menu, and we just do an unfold, it's gonna do a good job of relaxing those, but they've kind of spun around and they don't really look the way I want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab just the top two of these guys and we're gonna unfold them across the U axis first and then we're gonna unfold them across the V. So you can see that they've done a pretty good job. Then we'll just grab that sole and we'll unfold that on the V and then we'll unfold that on the U. So now that we've done that, they've laid out nicely. They're not rotated oddly and we can just, just um, where they've unfolded nicely, I should say. Now we can just grab them and go to our range and layout and just tell it to do a layout on that and it's gonna stack them on top of each other in a nice way. Oops, kinda of scooched across the window there and un unfocused that. But you can see that we've now got decent UVs laid out um, looking, looking really pretty good. So with that done, we can now jump to the next step which is taking the information that is on that high res shoe and transferring it or baking it on to the low res shoe, the color information, as well as some of that subtle detail that we're gonna capture in the form of a normal map. So to do that, we'll just jump over to our outliner. We'll turn on this high res shoe one more time. I'm gonna delete. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go to our rendering section and in texturing, we're going, I'm sorry, lighting and shading, we're gonna go to transfer maps. So this is going to be our target mesh, our low res object, and then we're gonna grab our recap or our high res object and add that in as our source. And we're gonna generate a output map for the color as well as a map for the normal. And we'll just say bake. So it's gonna go through. And I think I have it set to generate 1K maps here. So at, at um, actually kind of lower quality, but it'll take just a few seconds for it to kind of go through the operations of figuring all this out for us and baking these two texture maps to, uh, to capture a bit more of that subtle detail that that high res model has and, and capture it in the form of a normal map and a, and a diffuse map in the, uh, the low res model. All right, so now that operation is finished, we can grab this low res piece of geometry and we can just delete its history and now uh, we can kind of scoot it up a little bit here. And you can see that, actually we can scoot that a little bit higher. You know, we were able to take um, obviously a very high res piece of geometry that has, you know, really bad topology, crazy, and get a very nice low res piece of geometry that's got contours that follow all the various pieces of geometry on the actual shoe the way they should, as well as capturing all that information in the form of a color map and a normal map. So that's basically my workflow. Obviously it needs to be further refined, but that gives you an idea of what I'm thinking about. If you're taking the time to watch this video on YouTube or on Vimeo, make sure you go back to the area and check out the Journey to VR blog. On that blog, I've been recording lots of demos in Max and Maya, as well as various game engines, talking about VR and AR. Also, we have some really awesome articles that have been written with interviews from our clients talking about the things that they're doing in the world of VR and AR. So make sure you go back to the area and check that out. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this, everybody. Cheers.